Hello and welcome to the Success Bureau. In this video, David is going to teach you some tried and tested passive income strategies. This course is completely free. And if you like learning about making money online, entrepreneurship, business, productivity and emerging technologies, please consider subscribing to the channel. Please smash that like button. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Let's get started. Whether you want to be able to free yourself from the daily grind and still generate a full-time income, or you just want more time to spend with friends and family, or perhaps traveling the world, passive income is the key. Passive income is any income that requires little or no ongoing work to maintain. Ideally, your passive income businesses will require absolutely no work to maintain, but occasionally you can increase your income by expanding on your passive income channels or by combining more than one. You can also outsource these tasks and eliminate them from your own schedule as well. In this course, we'll discuss the top tips and strategies for creating streams of passive income so you can enjoy true financial freedom. One popular passive income stream that doesn't require a lot of startup capital is selling your knowledge in the form of a book, digital or physical, or through an online course or training program. The source of this investment is the knowledge that you already have and the time to write it down. Some of the best types of digital content are how-to books that teach people specific skills that improve their lives somehow. Any book that offers value to the end user is a valuable asset that you can sell. What makes this such a great passive income generator is the fact that you can sell the book digitally with practically no upfront costs. You can sell it unlimited times, no need to restock, and payments are made directly to you from the distributor with all commissions paid automatically. This is as near to maintenance free as it gets. You can sell your books on multiple sites and your own website. In addition, it's very easy to self-publish a book with the Amazon KDP platform. You no longer have to try to land a publishing deal at all. You can simply create a free Amazon publishers account and upload your manuscript. Tips. Be sure you price your book at $3.99 or higher so Amazon will give you a 70% return. You'll need a professionally designed cover as well. Check out Upwork.com or Fiverr.com for affordable cover designs. You can also outsource editing, proofreading or outsource the entire book. Creating a course will take a bit more time, but the process has never been easier. Online courses and especially video courses are big business and are becoming an essential tool for digital entrepreneurs. Online courses not only generate revenue, and a practical passive income, they can also build the authority of your brand, generate more leads and help with SEO. Creating a course based on your field of expertise will offer maximum value for your students and customers and build trust in you and your products. Making a course may at first glance appear to be a difficult endeavor, but with a little work, you can have a professional course ready to market a lot sooner than you think. Once you have your content ready to make into a video course, you can do it yourself with little more than a laptop and a smartphone, or have a video course creation company like ScreenPromos.com do it for you. So let's get into the 10 steps to creating an online video course. Most of these steps can also be applied to writing an ebook. Number one, choose a course topic. Stick to what you know. Courses are all about passing on valuable knowledge. If you try to build a course based on a subject that is popular, but you have little or no knowledge of, it will show in the overall quality and value. Choose a topic that you are passionate about. You don't need to be a qualified academic to teach a subject. You just need passion and knowledge. Draw on your personal experiences and skills. Pass on what you have learned. Two, market demand. Do some basic research. Once you have decided on a topic, check to see if there is a demand for courses on that topic. There is no point in creating a brilliant course on a topic that has no demand. You may be tempted to think that if there is low competition in your niche, then you will see higher returns. This is most often not the case. A professionally made video course in a high demand niche will almost certainly do well. Search for courses on your topic. You may find that a particular area of your chosen subject has a high demand. For example, if your topic is video production, you may find that there is a high demand for courses on short filmmaking or how to shoot corporate promos. Three, learning outcomes and achievements. Students will only buy or enrol on a course if they know what the end result will be. There needs to be a defined purpose. Creating a course without defined results will lead to poor feedback 
and low completion rates. Students ultimately join courses to learn a new skill. If you can make it clear what that skill will be and build the course with the ultimate goal of providing the correct knowledge to achieve this, the course will be easier to create and will lead to happy customers. Let the student know what skill they will acquire and what knowledge they will gain. 4. Gather your course material. With so many resources around you, it can often seem overwhelming. Where do you start? You already have the knowledge in your head. You could start by writing it down. You may have hard drives with work on that you can utilise or repurpose. You probably have books of your chosen subject which will help. As mentioned earlier, blogs are a brilliant source for course content. If the prospect of sitting and writing a course from beginning to end seems daunting, a blog might be the perfect way to start. With a blog, you don't need to worry about structure. That can all be done later. Start writing regular blog posts on topics that can be used in your course. These posts will become the building blocks for your course and can also become a valuable traffic building resource. 5. Structure your course. Take a look at some courses online. There are some free ones available at futurelearn.com. Take your blog posts and start to arrange in logical order. It's easier than you may think. 6. Delivery methods. Video is the most engaging type of media and will certainly be the main delivery format. But you should also consider having some text-based documentation. Worksheets are a great idea. This could be a simple quiz at the end of each section of the course. These can also be used as coursework which can be submitted by the student at the end of the course to receive a certificate of completion. 7. Recording your online video course. Now we are ready to produce the course video content. You can do this yourself or use a specialist video production company to do this for you. If you have some video editing skills and a smartphone, there is no reason that you can't produce the videos yourself. If you don't have those skills or maybe you want a more polished product, you can use sites like screenpromos.com. These include a spokesperson, text overlays, graphics, stock footage and background music. 8. Where to sell your video course. There are three main ways to sell your course. 1. Online course marketplaces. 2. Learning management systems. 3. Standalone, download or offline. Online course marketplaces like Udemy are the equivalent of selling on eBay. It's a marketplace with lots of other courses and is all structured and administered by the host website. A learning management system is like having your own e-commerce store, but in this case, it is an academy. You can link this to your website and brand it. It makes it easy to create and structure your online course ready for delivery. Thinkific.com is a great option. 9. Price and conversion. You need to determine the ultimate goal of your course. Is the course to be used as a free lead magnet, subsidiary income to your main business or your main course of income? Once you have decided on this, the content, duration and pricing of the course can be determined. If it's going to be given away for free as a lead magnet, it will be acting more as a teaser. It would be very high quality to demonstrate your authority, but should also be short to keep costs down and leave the customer wanting more. If you are planning on using courses as a main income, you will need to provide maximum value for your customers and then you can charge accordingly. There's no risk with this stream of passive income. It will take time, but once your content is created, you'll be able to generate passive income from new customers day after day without having to update the course material very often. Rental properties are a proven method for generating passive income, but it comes with some definite risks. John H. Graves, a Los Angeles fiduciary, recommends you determine three things before getting started. How much return do you want from your investment? What total costs and expenses will you incur from this investment? What financial risks are you running with this investment? In addition, this is one of the passive income streams that does require periodic injections of cash for upkeep of the property. You need to be realistic with your expected returns as well. For example, you can't reasonably expect to charge thousands of dollars in monthly rent in a less desirable neighbourhood. If you want to start investing in rental properties, we recommend talking to the experts, doing a lot of research online and checking out the properties yourself to be sure you're getting exactly what you're paying for. You don't have to float the entire cost of the property yourself though. There are plenty of opportunities to collaborate with other investors and become a part owner of a larger property. Do some Google surfing. A company called Roofstock will hook you up with single family homes you can purchase and rent out. With Realty Mogul, 
you can invest as little as $1,000 and become a part owner in a larger property. Just be sure the platform you're using is a reputable one. Paid ads and sponsorships is where you rent space on your website or social media account to a third-party seller and receive a commission either just for showcasing the offer or per action, such as when someone clicks on an ad and makes a purchase from your site, etc. Affiliate marketing and paid advertising is a great way to generate passive income. However, it will require that you have an existing blog or website that can generate a good amount of high-quality, targeted traffic in order to convert that into commissions or be able to attract sponsorship and paid advertisers. Amazon is probably the best-known affiliate partner and one of the easiest to work with. Other well-known sources include ShareASale and Zaydu.com. The effort involved in starting up this passive income stream involves building your platform. You need a relatively large following to make the most of this income opportunity. In order to build that sort of platform, you'll need to put the effort into creating a website that gives followers something of value. This means you'll be required to do quite a bit of upfront work, such as updating your website or blog regularly and giving your followers quality content they'll enjoy, enough to keep coming back. This is one of the streams that also requires upkeep, as you must maintain your website or social media account to keep the followers you have and continue to attract new ones. Your website or social media account should be something you're passionate about, something you'll be motivated to post regularly about. You're not selling anything on your platform. Your goal is to be original, be creative, be real and attract followers. There's really not much risk with this stream of passive income and it can be exceptionally lucrative. You just need to be willing to dedicate the time and effort up front to get the ball rolling. High Yield CDs Investing in a high yield certificate of deposit allows you to take advantage of some of the highest interest rates in the country in order to generate a nice passive income stream. First, you'll want to do a Google search of a country's top CD rates and check out the interest rates. You'll probably want to use an online bank to get that top rate. So long as that bank is backed by the FDIC, your principal investment is protected up to $250,000. The only real risk with high yield CDs is rising inflation. But at the moment, that doesn't look like much of a threat. Keep an eye on the market and you can easily avoid that risk in the future. Peer-to-peer -peer lender. This is a personal loan where you're fronting the money through a third party intermediary like Prosper, Funding Circle or Lending Club and making money through the interest paid by your borrowers. P2P loans are conducted online so you don't actually have to meet with your borrowers in person. It's a more streamlined process too, but in order to make a P2P loan work out, you need to do a good bit of research and learn all about the market. This is a passive income stream that requires both time and money up front. The best way to handle this stream is to diversify. Invest smaller amounts over several different loans instead of loaning a large sum to one party. At prosper.com, you can loan as little as $25 You'll want to investigate your potential borrowers too. Make sure there'll be a good risk by checking their past loan history. It does take time to master the techniques of peer-to-peer -peer lending, so plan on a bit of effort at the beginning until you learn the ropes. You'll probably be dealing with millennials, for example, who are five times more likely to fund their small business with P2P loan than Generation X. You'll also probably want to reinvest the interest on those loans and build up your income. Risks with this income stream include being disorganised and missing payments. You have to keep up with all those small loans and stay on top of the payments. You might run the risk of a default if the economy takes a downturn too. If you'd like to invest your money in a company with dividend yielding stocks, you'll receive a dividend cheque a few times a year without having to do anything other than put in your initial investment. These dividends depend on how many shares of stock you own, so it's a good way to invest a larger sum of money. You'll also want to put in some research effort for this passive income stream. Choosing the right stocks is essential. You want something that's going to increase in value over time, not decrease. Spend at least a couple of weeks investigating each company you're considering, so you're familiar with their financial statements and can tell whether or not they're likely to go up in value. John H. Graves has another recommendation for dividend stocks, especially for novices. Try exchange-traded funds or ETFs. 
These are investment funds that hold assets such as stocks, commodities and bonds, but they trade like stocks. They're easy to understand and inexpensive compared to regular dividend stocks. They cost less than mutual funds and are easy to liquidate when you need to. Another big risk, besides picking the wrong stocks, is that stocks and ETFs can drop in value significantly if the market takes a downturn, as it did early in the global pandemic. Talk about your passive income streams. How much more passive can you get than putting your money into a high-yield savings account and just watching the interest add up? We've all enjoyed this benefit since childhood. Going down to the bank and opening up an account with our lawn mowing earnings, then watching eagerly as those pennies compound. So long as the bank you choose is backed by the FDIC, your risk with the stream of income is pretty low. Just save up a few thousand dollars and aim for the highest interest rate possible. Online banks can have interest rates that are 10 times more than your local brick and mortar bank. Sometimes even more than that. Just do a bit of homework and make sure they've got that official backing to protect your investment. You can even transfer money from your primary bank to the online one and vice versa. This is a simple method of earning that just requires that initial investment of cash. The more you have, of course, means the more you earn in return. There's almost no risk at all if you've got the FDIC insurance up to around $250,000. The only problem that might arise is if the economy weakens. In that case, the interest rates will tend to drop and you won't get as much of a payout as you would otherwise. Invest in an REIT. This stands for Real Estate Investment Trust, and it's just a fancy term for any company that owns and handles real estate. They usually own or manage commercial properties, either the physical property or the mortgage on that property. They tend to focus on a specific group of properties, like medical care or shopping centres or hotels. An REIT is like a stock share. They're structured so that they pay little or no income tax, so long as they pass most of their earnings along to their shareholders. You buy an REIT just like any other stock on the market and earn dividends several times a year as with other high yield dividend stocks. Retail REITs, shopping malls and freestanding retail business, account for about 24% of investment in America. That's the biggest investment by type in the country. When you're thinking about investing in an REIT, you need to look at the whole retail industry. Is it healthy and likely to stay so? Or are things looking rocky? Remember, the REIT firm is getting their income from the rent of its tenants. So if you've got a shopping centre or business that's got a high turnover rate, it's probably not going to generate as much income as you'd like. You might think about aiming at traditionally safer real estate investments like grocery or home improvement stores. Keep in mind also that a lot of shopping is shifting to online. That shopping mall may not even be in existence in 10 or 20 years. There are also residential REITs, which focus on apartment buildings and manufactured housing. With this type of REIT, you'll want to look at location. For example, the best apartment markets are where there are less homes available, like in large urban centres. The largest residential REITs tend to focus on areas like this. You should also look at population and job growth. As long as the apartment supply in your market stays low and demand is increasing, your residential REIT should perform well. Healthcare REITs invest in the real estate of hospitals, medical centres, nursing facilities and retirement homes. This is probably going to be one of the investment areas to watch as our baby boomers grow older and require more skilled care. However, remember that the success of the REITs is tied to the healthcare system. So long as the healthcare funding remains questionable, so do these REITs. Look for companies with a lot of healthcare experience. There are also office REITs who handle office rentals. There are four basic questions you want to ask when investing in this area. How high is the unemployment rate? What are their vacancy rates like? What's the economy like in the area you'll be investing in? How much capital does the REIT have? Think of investing in economic strongholds. In other words, it's better to have a bunch of average office buildings in DC than to have primo space in Detroit. Dividends from a good REIT can even increase yearly, so you might just end up with a growing stream of dividends over time. There's a bit of research involved with this stream, as with any stock purchase. You want to be sure to pick the best REITs that will increase your earnings instead of dropping in value. 
You'll also need that initial outlay of cash to get the ball rolling. One way to minimise your risk is to buy into an exchange traded fund or ETF that diversifies by investing in lots of different REITs instead of sinking everything into just one individual trust. These often have lower risk ratios so you can gain exposure to real estate trading without as much risk as investing in an individual company. You do need to do your homework with an REIT or ETF. Even though it's considered passive income, you can lose big if you choose the wrong ones. You'll want to start analysing these companies like you did for the regular stocks. It takes a bit of time and effort before you can pick out the best choices. A tough economy can take a big bite out of your income stream as well. If your REIT doesn't create enough income, it might reduce the dividend or cut it out entirely. That could be disastrous because a tough economy is just when you'll need that passive income coming in. Build a bond ladder. This is a portfolio of fixed income bonds that mature over a period of years at different times. This lets you decrease your reinvestment risk by minimising your exposure to fluctuating interest rates. Let's say you buy a five-year bond at a fixed interest rate, but two years from now, interest rates go up. Your bond is still chugging away at that lower rate and there's no way to change it. However, if you have different maturation rates, you might be able to roll over some of your bonds and take advantage of that better rate. You can take the same amount of initial investment and stagger your maturation times so you're more likely to be able to profit from the market. Another example, you purchase a two-year bond and get a 1% yield on that. You also purchase a four-year bond for 2% yield, a six-year bond for 2.5% yield, and an eight-year bond with 3% yield. In two years, when the first bond matures, you reinvest the proceeds in a new eight-year bond with 3% yield, and continue this practice as your bonds mature, assuming interest rates stay the same or increase, of course. Charles Schwab of schwab.com suggests buying a minimum of 10 securities for diversification. The idea is to take the total amount you're planning to invest, with the goal being to extend your ladder as long as possible. He suggests a minimum of $100,000 to be invested with 10 rungs of $10,000 each. One benefit to having at least 6 rungs is that you can easily build a ladder that will generate monthly income, since each bond will pay out twice a year. You'll also want to consider the spacing between rungs. The longer the ladder, the higher your income is likely to be since those are the bonds that will give you higher yields. Of course, going long tends to increase your risk, as we discussed before. You may reduce your income a bit by buying shorter, maturing bonds, but it'll be safer in the long run. Just like a physical ladder, you build this one with different material. In this case, different types of bonds or CDs. As each one matures, you just reinvest the principal in new bonds with the longest term you originally chose for your ladder. If interest rates go up, you can reinvest at higher rates. If they go down, you'll still have some bonds locked in at higher rate to fall back on. Bond ladders do come with risks, of course, such as the interest rate may fall. And since bonds are not backed by the federal government, like corporate bonds, you might lose your principal. And just like stocks and REITs, you'll want to own many different bonds to diversify your risk. You can find a bond ETF, just like an REIT ETF that will give you a portfolio of bonds you can build a ladder from. This will greatly decrease your risk of a single bond hurting your returns. Print-on-demand products are in high demand. T-shirts, posters, mugs and home printable templates for things like planners are all popular. One of the best things about selling print-on-demand products is that you can easily turn it into a fully automated passive income business. Websites like redbubble.com and Amazon Merch have ready-built platforms with their own customers and traffic. They even advertise on your behalf and rank high in search results. Yes, you can and probably should promote your products yourself, but it's not essential. Print-on-demand websites make it easy for you to upload an image or design and see that design on mock-ups of products such as T-shirts, mouse mats, hoodies, mugs and many more products. You can then simply give the product a price, title and description and it will be live on the site ready to sell. When a product sells, everything is taken care of for you. The print-on-demand site processes the order, manufacture the product, ship the product, and deal with all customer support. You just collect your commission. It really is that simple. 
You can also sell home printables, which are usually PDF files that customers can download and print at home. Things like planners, calendars, wedding table plans or signs are always popular. You can sell your designs on Etsy.com and just like the print on demand sites, once you have uploaded your designs, Etsy takes care of everything else. The customer can download the purchased design directly from Etsy. So how do you make designs to sell? If you are artistic and have a talent for design, you can create your own designs in any design software or use a site like Canva.com to create designs using templates. Canva has some great templates that can be easily modified to create unique designs. They have templates for everything from t-shirts to planners. If design is not one of your talents or you don't have the time to create designs, you can either buy pre-made designs, which you can claim as your own. These are called PLR or private label rights, or you can outsource the design process. You can use freelancers on sites like Upwork and Fiverr to create designs for you. If you want to sell print on demand products in a particular niche, you can instruct a freelancer to make designs in that particular niche. There is also a completely free way to get images to use on your print on demand products. You can use public domain images. There are millions of public domain images that you can use as print on demand products. You can find ready to use images on sites like public domain archive. You can also use royalty free images from sites like pexel.com. Once your designs are uploaded and listed for sale, you have a truly passive income stream. You're probably not actually using that spare bedroom for anything other than storage, right? Why not fix the room up a bit and rent it out? It just takes a bit of time and effort to clean and declutter the space. You can advertise on lots of different websites like Airbnb or Zillow and set the rental terms yourself. If you rent to a longer term tenant, you'll be collecting a check with minimal extra effort on your part. Short term tenants bring risks we'll talk about in a minute that you might want to stay away from. In fact, nowadays your rental space doesn't even have to be a room. You can put up a tent in your backyard and rent a camping experience if you live in a scenic area. You can rent the whole backyard for a party space if you've got it decorated and have a barbecue pit and or pool. People will stay almost anywhere if it's interesting enough. The first step is to check out your local laws. Call your housing authority or check out the local government website to find information about renting a room in your area. Your homeowners association may have additional laws regarding a rental as well, so check with them before you advertise. Many city ordinances require renters to have access to clean running water and working plumbing. Some cities require a room to have windows large enough to be used as a fire escape or even to have outdoor access. You'll need to check the laws before you rent. Check out the fair housing laws at the US Department of Housing and Urban Development or HUID2. You'll need to create a tenant screening criteria form which will protect you if someone decides to file a discrimination claim against you. This lists everything to keep in mind when considering a prospective tenant. It's a little more work, but it may help you avoid a hefty legal fee. You can find free examples of this form online. Once you make sure you're legally allowed to rent a room in your home, check your homeowner's insurance to make sure it's approved. Some companies don't have a problem, but others won't allow it, and some will raise your rates if you rent. Tenants increase your liability and risk of property damage, so you might even have to get landlord insurance, which costs 50 to 20% more than homeowner's insurance. Check comparable rental rates in your area to find out how much rent you can reasonably charge. You can use rentometer.com to check this out. Using a service like spareroom.com or roomster.com can help find a compatible tenant for your space. If you have a camera or even a smartphone with a decent camera, you can make passive income from photos and videos. There is a huge market for images and videos that can be used royalty free. Media companies need new images and videos constantly. They often don't have the time or resources to send out a camera crew to gather the images themselves. So they buy stock instead. Sites like Getty Images and Shutterstock sell hundreds of thousands of images and clips every day. Most stock footage and image sites are free to sign up to and you can literally start uploading and selling. Most have their own criteria for images and video clips. The only other work you have to do is write a good SEO optimized title and description, then add some keyword tags. 
If writing or SEO is not one of your talents, you can make things even easier by letting someone else take care of that for you. For stock footage, you can use a site like blackbox.global. Blackbox acts as an aggregator. You upload your clips to Blackbox and they distribute the clips to a number of different stock footage platforms. They have great resources and guidance available to help you make great stock footage that sells. The best thing about Blackbox is the ability to collaborate with other users. You can let other users handle all of the keywording and descriptions for a percentage of the sales, so there is no upfront cost to you. You can also collaborate with editors who can edit your footage into short stock footage clips. Once your stock media is online, there is no further work required. All income from that point on is passive. You will just receive a payment each month for the sold media. With this type of passive income stream, just like with print on demand, the trick is to upload as many high quality images and videos as possible. It's a numbers game. The more images and videos you have online, the more income you will receive. You can start by looking through your old hard drives and dig out any old images or footage that can be used. You can then look on stock sites to see what images and videos are popular. Then actively take photos and videos in a similar style. Rarer clips and images also sell well. If you have points of interest local to you, use those. When it comes to building passive income channels that will help you experience true financial freedom, Greg McBride, Chief Financial Analyst at Bankrate says, you'll catch more fish with multiple lines in the water. So don't be afraid to venture into other passive income avenues or launch multiple businesses in different industries or niches. Just be sure to research each market thoroughly or hire an expert to both prepare and mentor you throughout the process. With a little time, effort and a lot of determination, you can generate a nice, solid, passive stream of income for years to come. That brings us to the end of this course. From all of us here at the Success Bureau, I'd like to wish you the very best for the future and I hope to see you on another course soon.